Hey guys, and welcome back to another Python machine learning tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about our first unsupervised learning algorithm, which is called K means clustering. Now, this algorithm is different than the other ones that we've been using because we don't actually have to feed the labels for our data points when we are training the model. All we do is we just give it a bunch of features that make up one point. We don't say which points are which. So in the case of what we're going to be doing in the next video, classifying handwritten digits, we don't say this digit's a one, this digit's a five, this digit's a six. We just say this is a digit, this is a digit, and this is a digit. And then our computer has to figure out what makes what digit. Okay. Whereas before we were giving both, like let's say the same example, uh, what made up the digit and we were giving the digit. And all it had to do then was be able to predict given some data what digit it was doing. So it was, had a lot easier job than actually having to determine what features make up, for example, let's say a seven or an eight, right? Uh, in the computer. And you'll see this as we go through the example. Now, what I actually want to start doing uh, is just, I'm just going to run this script. By the way, this is not exactly what we're going to be making in the next video. Uh, I just stole this off the sklearn website, but it gives a really good uh, visualization as to how K means clustering works. So uh, wait for this to run and we get a lovely photo here that might look kind of confusing, but essentially the K in K means clustering stands for how many clusters. Now, in the case of handwritten digits, which is what we're going to be classifying, we have the digits zero through nine, which is 10 digits. So in this case, you can see that we have 10 X's, okay, 10 white X's. Now, these white X's are known as centroids, and they are what's going to determine what uh, a given data point, what cluster that belongs to. So you can see we have 10 clusters, and they're all represented by all these different colors here, right? So anything that is falls inside of this red box here, is going to be a part of the red class, which could be like a six, it could be a seven, it could be an eight. We have to determine that. Anything that falls inside of this brown uh, point here is going to be another class, anything inside the green and, and so on. Okay. And that's exactly how K means works. It attempts to divide our graph of data points into a bunch of different, let's say sections like this. And then based on what section a given point is that we're trying to predict, we can just say that it is, uh, a part of the closest what's known as this one of these X's. Okay. So if we had a data point, let's say if you guys see my mouse right up here, it's going to say it's part of this pink uh, place because it's closest to this white X. So I'm going to go through an example here, but I just wanted to show this so you can kind of see how it works when we're dealing with a ton of different uh, clusters. Cause I'm just going to show you an example with two to make it easier. So um, you might've heard of something called centroids before. So essentially the way this algorithm works is we're going to start off by creating two centroids in a random position in our uh, graph. So typically we're going to deal with multidimensional graphs, right? Where we have like 10, 20, 30 different features for each of our, uh, our data points, right? So we'll just randomly choose a place to put two centroids on our graph if we're dealing with K equals two. Now, if we were going to deal with K equals like five, K equals 10, K equals 20, that's how many centroids we would put onto our graph in a random position. And you'll see how this works in a second. Okay. So I'm just going to put a centroid and I'm going to mark these by triangles here. And I'm going to put a centroid, uh, this blue one up here. Okay. Just in random positions. Now note that I could put them like right beside each other. Uh, it doesn't matter where I put them. It's just completely random that we're going to generate this. Okay. Now what we're going to do once we have these two random centroids and we're going to do this a bunch of times. So don't worry if, uh, if it's like, how is this going to work? It's going to happen a bunch of times. What we're going to do is we're going to repeat the process that I'm just about to go through. So we're going to draw a straight line between our two centroids. Okay. And then we're going to try to divide all of the points that are here to be either a part of this red cent centroid or this uh, blue centroid. Okay. So what we do is that we now will take a line like this and we'll draw it through the uh, midpoint of the line connecting our centroids. And anything on this side is going to be a part of the red centroid. And anything on this side is going to be part of the blue centroid. Okay, so that's what we do, first of all. So I'll get rid of all this drawing and we'll just say that, uh, actually we'll go back here, that now we're gonna assign this point's gonna be blue, like this, like all these points that were on that side of the line will be blue. And then all the other points are going to be red, like this. So red, 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 red. Now, how does this work and why are we doing this? Well, essentially, the reason that we'd say this point here is a part of the red centroid is because it's closer to the red centroid than it is to the blue centroid. 
Now that goes for every other point. We're just going to find the points that are closest to each centroid. We're going to say, okay, so is this point closer to the red centroid or the blue centroid? Whatever one it's closer to, we're just going to assign it that value. So in this case, we give it red. Same thing with these points over here. And you know, this one actually we might want to say is probably a part of the blue one. Um, so I guess we can change that just for the purpose of the example here. Okay. So we'll say that's blue. This one might be kind of in between anyways. So that's what we're going to do. Now that we've done that, we need to do something else. We need to find uh, the center of these points. So essentially all these blue points here, we want to put this centroid in the middle of these blue points. So what we're going to do is, well, we're going to erase this centroid and we're going to find the middle of these points. Now, the way we can do this, so I'm going to say the middle is probably somewhere about like here. The way that we can do this is by just simply taking the average of these points. So what we do is we take X1 plus X2 plus X3 for all of our points, all of our blue points, and then we divide it by the uh, amount of points. So we'll say the amount of points is N. Now that'll give us the X1 coordinate, uh, or sorry, like so X11, X21, like if you're talking about if this is second point, this is third point. I think you guys get that for like the X coordinates anyways. Uh, so we'll do that. That'll give us the first coordinate for the centroid. Then what we'll do is we'll do the same thing, except now we'll talk about X2. So we'll say like, 0.2 x2 plus 0.1 x2 plus 0.3 x2. And again, we'll divide that by the number of points and that'll give us the next coordinate for our centroid. And that's how we can determine the, the middle of uh, these kind of data points, okay? We're gonna do the exact same thing for our red centroid. So what we'll do now is we'll take this and we'll draw our red centroid, let's say somewhere about here, okay? And again, the way we did that, we just took the average of the coordinates for all of the points that are red and all of the points that are blue. So now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the steps that we just did. So we're going to, again, we're going to draw a line between these two centroids. We're going to find the midpoint of this line, and we're just going to draw 90 degrees down like this. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to reassign points. So now we're going to, we're going to forget that these points were blue and these points were red. And we're going to reassign them. So in this case, we need to change, well, this red point to blue. And we need to change this blue point to red, right? Because again, now this point is closer to the red centroid than it is to the blue centroid. So it's going to be red. And then maybe with this one that was red before, it's now closer to the blue centroid. So it has to be blue. And we're going to repeat this process until eventually we get no changes between our data points, right? So now again, what we're going to do is we're going to redraw our centroids. So we need to find the average once again, except this time when we find the average, we're going to use the, uh, what do you call it? The new points that we just created. So the red centroid, maybe it goes like something like this and the blue centroid, maybe it goes somewhere around here like that. Okay. And now that we have the average, we're going to do the exact same thing and we're just going to keep going until eventually we have no change. So if I do this and then I find the midpoint and then I draw a straight line, well, let's just pretend that like this, uh, what do you call it? This point is over here on this side. Well, now there's no change between our data points. None of the points here have changed to be red and none of the points here have changed to be blue. So we can officially say that we've clustered our points into two separate, um, clusters, right? So all the points that are red here and in this side of the graph are going to be closest to the red centroid. So they're red and all the ones on this side are closest to the blue centroid. So they're blue. So now if we have a black point, let's say like up here, we can say that since it's closest to the blue centroid, we should predict it as blue. And that's essentially how the K means algorithm uh, works. So we keep going through a bunch of iterations of essentially creating these centroids. So I'll bring this one back. Um, and then we average the centroid out and we put it in the middle of the points that we just decided were, were there. And we just keep going and keep going until eventually we get to a point where our centroids are so good that every time we redo the calculations, nothing changes and our centroid stays in the exact same place. I hope that, um, makes sense in terms of how that works in clustering. Now, obviously, if we're doing with like three clusters, well, what we're going to have to do now is we'll say, well, this point is going to be part of the black cluster. This point will be a part of the black cluster as well um, because it's closest to the black centroid. And then we'll do the exact same thing, except we're just going to repeat the process with three centroids, right, instead of two. And that is how um, k-means clustering works. And now it's time to talk quickly about like some advantages, disadvantages of it. So essentially, uh, speed. Okay, so let's think about this realistically. 
We have to, for every single point in our data set, determine the distance between not only one of the centroids, but the other centroid. Which means that if we have, let's say we bump this up to four, right? Now we have to do two times the amount of calculations for every single point. Because we gotta determine the distance from this point to here, to here, and to two other centroids. And then we have to now figure out which one is closest and assign this point to that centroid, right? We have to do that for every single one of our points which means that we're gonna have like the number of points, so let's say P multiplied, I'll just do that by a dot, by the number of centroids, which will be C. But now, we don't only have to do this once, we have to do this until every single data point is, um, what do you call it, not moving, right? Until we get to a point where our centroids are so well defined that we're not moving. So that's now by the number of iterations, right? But guess what? We don't only have to do it this many times, we have to do it based on how many features we have. Because if we have x1, we have x2, and let's say we have up to x700, which is actually very possible that we can have that many features, we now have to do this 700 times. So times the number of features. I think I butchered that word, but anyways, you guys know what I mean, okay? So we have to do the number of data points times the number of centroids times the number of iterations. So how many times we recenter those centroids um, and change the data points times the amount of features. So that is, well, it's going to take a long time compared to some of our other machine learning algorithms, but it's actually a lot slower uh, or a lot faster, sorry, than um, some other clustering algorithms. So you can imagine though, like if you have a ton of features and a ton of data points, uh, this is going to take a decent amount of time to perform. For us, it's not going to take more than like 30 seconds, but if you have a, a ton of features and a ton of data points, um, then it's going to take a long time because right, C uh, is probably not going to change that many that much because it's probably only going to be up to like 10 or 20 for the amount of centroids because you're not going to have that many different classes and the number of iterations well this could be in a f like a few hundred but our data points is probably going to be the most influential uh, parameter here right so yeah so anyways um, let's just go back to this example really quickly I'll talk about it uh, one last time with the image here okay so I was having some weird issue with my mouse but anyways we'll run this now and let's look at the centroids and now we hopefully have a better idea of exactly what we've done here, right? So these centroids started off in random positions. Maybe we had one up here, we had one down here, we had them all over. And essentially we found the points that were closest to them. We said that it's going to be that centroid, like it's going to be a part of that. We averaged them out, so we moved the centroid to be in the middle of all those points that are belonging to that centroid. Then what we did was we performed that operation again and again and again and again until eventually we get something that looks like this where every time that we find points that are closest to each centroid and we average them out we're not uh we're not moving the centroid at all right so here like find a point it's all these points that are here if we take the average of all these points and we move the centroid it doesn't move and that's how we know that we have essentially found the best possible cluster for our data set and this is just done in two dimensions, uh, just so you can see, but obviously this is happening in like a crazy high dimension that's just impossible to visualize. So anyways, that is how k-means clustering works. As always, if you guys have questions, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. You can uh, join my Discord server, ask for help on there as well, and make sure to follow my Twitter. In the next video, we're going to get into actually using the k-means clustering algorithm, uh, and then we'll be done with machine learning at least for like a week or so until we move into some more neural networks.